Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems. We have already finished solving all the math, almost all the math problems from this book here. The official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You must solve every single problem from this book. If there is a problem that gives you difficulty, there is a, there is a problem that gives you trouble, you will find the solutions to almost all the math problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, contains almost the same problem and in most cases on the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from, from the first edition from day number 1 through 250. Original solutions to the problem tend to be a little bit lengthier and they tend to be, tend to be a little bit in depth. Right now, we are solving problems from this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. We are solving the quantitative comparison questions because the new books do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important. They are still in the exam to get some more practice. We started doing this project a few days ago. We are on page number right now. On, we are on page number right now, 135. Please start to it. Problem number seven on page 135, the penultimate problem on the penultimate problem on the page, the second to the last problem on the page, number seven. We are given a we are given a rectangle PQST, and that rectangle is being cut into halves. It's such that they form equal squares. PQRV, PQRV, and RSTV, RSTV. We are told are squares with side six. What we are being asked to compare is the area of the shaded region, area of the shaded region versus 36, versus 36. And here is the shaded region that they give us. The shaded region that they are giving us is, this region right here. Very straightforward, very simple problem, problem number 7. Let's see what was the percentile on it. 75% of people. 75% of people who took the exam, three quarters of the people had no trouble with it whatsoever. P to Q, we know each side is 6. We are told that these are squares with side 6. P to Q which means 6. Q to R is 6. And R to S is 6. Now, we can look at this, we can look at this triangle, the shaded region they are talking about, which is triangle P, Q, S. Triangle P, Q, S. And we are interested in finding the area of it. We can look at this triangle P, Q, S from two different vantage points. We can either look at from the vantage point of Q, P to Q and use that as the base, P to Q as the base, in which case the area is going to be one half, one half base, which is P to Q, which is six. And if this is our vantage point, if this is our vantage point, then the height is going to be from here to here, Q to S, which is six plus six, which is 12. Which is 12. Or if you like, I can, I can put a little bit more detail, one half base times height, one half base, which we are using as P to Q, times height, which is Q to S. And it's one half base, which is six, times height, which is six plus six, which is 12. So it's one half, six times 12. We can take this two and cross it out with this 12 and become six, so it's six times six. And of course, six times six is 36. So we have six times six. We have the area of the area of the triangle PQS as 6 times 6 versus 36 and of course the answer is C. That was it, number 7. Now that was, that was one way of solving the problem but as you can see it was a very nitty-gritty, very academic, very orthodox, very conventional, very parochial way of doing the problem. Very parochial way of doing the problem. On the way, we could have tackled this problem. On the way, we could have looked at this problem in this way. Instead of making it so academic, here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. You see where the line PS and the line RV intersect? Let's give this point a name. Let's call it, we have P, Q, R, S, T, V. Let's call it W. Pick up the triangle. Pick up, pick up triangle W, R, S. W, R, S. Pick it up. Pick it up in your mind, pick it up and, 
and flip it. Pick it up and flip it. You should be able to see when you pick up triangle R W R S. Pick it up and when you when you flip it, when you pick it up and flip it, you should be able to see that it fits. It fits in. It fits in triangle P W V P W V. Can you see it? Can you can you picture it? Pick up this triangle right here. Pick it up and flip it and put it here. It should fit in P W V. So when they talk about the area of the shaded region, the area of the shaded region is nothing but the area of a square. This area of the shaded region is actually a square of six by six. It's a six by six square because when you flip it, we end up we we end up bringing it we, we end up bringing it here. That's what it is. So when you flip it here, it's just a square, six by six. We didn't have to make it so complicated. We didn't have to make it so academic. The area of the shaded region that they're talking about is simply the area of the square of six by six square, which is 36. The answer is C. Enough of the talk. Let's just move on. We're making too much fuss about nothing. Number eight. Question number eight. Question number eight. Question number eight. We are told that R, S, and T are three consecutive R integers. Three consecutive R integers, which means so. R, S, and T are three consecutive odd integers and they go on to tell us the order. They go on to tell us that R is less than S and S is less than T. And the question is which quantity is bigger? R plus S plus 1 versus S plus T minus 1. Let's find out, shall we? But the quickest, the easiest, the simplest way to do is to just plug in numbers. Let's just plug in numbers here. Let's call it 3, 5, and 7. They have to be three consecutive, they have to be three consecutive odd numbers, so we did that, three, five, and seven. So let's do that here. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that, only thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you want to save a couple of seconds here and there, then don't do extra work. If you find something that appears in both columns, if you find any common elements on the two columns, that element plays no role. It's just there to annoy you, it's just there to waste your time. We see an S here, we see an S here. Let's subtract S from this column, let's subtract S from that column. It drops out. And now we can go ahead and do it. R is equal to 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. And S, uh, and S is gone. T is, T is 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. And this was 4. 4 versus 6, the answer is B. Now, if you want to, if, if you want to play a little safe, and if you want to try it out, if you are wondering what would happen if these happen to be negative numbers instead of positive number, you can do that too. Let's plug a negative number this time. Let's see what happens. How about negative 7? negative 5 and a negative 3. These are three consecutive odd integers. Three consecutive odd integers. And again, r in this case is negative 7. So here we have negative 7 plus a 1, which is going to give us negative 6. And here we will have, so this is second second scenario. And here we have t, here we have t, which is negative 3 minus a 1. Negative 3 and minus a 1 is going to give us negative 4 negative 4 versus negative 6. As you can see, column B is still bigger. And you will also notice, you should also notice, you should also notice that the difference between the two columns, no matter what values you plug in for R, S, and T, no matter what value you plug in for R, S, and T, as long as there are three consecutive odd numbers, or for that matter, even numbers, the difference between the two columns will always be 2. The difference between the two columns will always be 2. I'll tell you why in a second. Let's put it on top. R, R, S, and T. Because they are consecutive odd numbers or even numbers, therefore S is just 2 more than R. S is just 2 more than R. And T is 2 more than S, which means T is 4 more than S. Four more than R. And what we have here is R plus 1, we have R plus 1 versus T minus 1. T minus 1. So here's what's going on. 
Okay, watch what happens. If we were comparing R and T, R and T, R of course, R and T, T is R plus 4, T, T is 4 more than R. Are you with me? T is 4 more than R, as it stands right now. But then we add 1 to it, as soon as we add 1 to R, now the difference between the two columns is down to 3. We don't stop at that, then we subtract 1 from T. And as we subtract 1 from the T, now we have narrowed down the gap, now we have reduced the difference between, R, between the first column and the second column by, uh, by 2. So again, one more time, to start out with, if we were just comparing R and T, the difference is 4. By giving 1 extra to R, now the difference between this column and this column is 3, and then we take 1 away from it, and now the difference between two columns is 2. And that, and that difference of 2 will always be 2, no matter what number you plug in. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.